Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. We're going to go to the New Testament and look at Saul, who became the Apostle Paul. A little bit of background here. King Saul of the Old Testament, the king prior to King David, was of the tribe of Benjamin. Well, Saul, the apostle who became Paul, was also of the tribe of Benjamin. Matter of fact, the tribe of Benjamin was almost wiped out. I think they were down to 600 people. I did a recent Bible study that uh, mentioned that they did something and, uh, I don't know, the tribes uh, attacked Benjamin and they were almost wiped out. I mean, almost totally. So, now, when Jesus came as the Messiah, as was mentioned in Jeremiah 31, 31, and we're going to take a look at that. So, in Jeremiah 31, 31, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, if the Jew thing is all of Israel, why would he specify the house of Israel and the house of Judah? Because they weren't the same people. Read Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. They had different land areas. They had different kings. They had wars against each other. Uh, not many Bible pastors will teach that stuff. And it's a new covenant. And if you listen to the Hebrew roots people, they'll say, now, 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 God's going to renew, renew the covenant. It's the old covenant, but he's just putting a new thing on it. You know, uh, yeah, I don't think so. You know, if, uh, if you got a 12-year-old car, it's got 185,000 miles on it, is it time to get a new car or to renew the car? Uh, you know, are you going to put new tires and new brakes and a new engine and a new transmission? Well, the body's still rusting out, right? I mean, really? There's a big difference between renew and new. Uh, you know, the Hebrew Roots people are... They're either deceivers or deceived. You could take your pick. But either way, they're heretics. Because a renewed covenant means that uh, they got to rebuild the temple, which I believe totally that the Jews are going to do. I totally believe that. They're going to rebuild the temple and start doing animal sacrifice again. And what does that do to the blood of Jesus? Uh, it's a total, complete and total denial of what Christ did on the cross. I mean, you think about it. Oh, but it's a renewed covenant. We got to go back to our Hebrew roots. Your Hebrew roots are the Babylonian Talmud and Kabbalah. Not the, not the Bible. The Bible's just what they hold up. You know, it's like you, you, you go to school and you're in math class, but you're reading a comic book, but you got that, uh, your, your textbook, your math textbook uh, over the comic book. So it looks like you're, to the teacher, you're reading your math book, but really you're reading Superman or Spider-Man or whatever, you know, comics you guys were into or gals, whatever. Uh, maybe Archie, you know, the gals like, a lot of gals liked Archie, but uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, they hold up the Bible, but really they're talking about the Talmud 
which is just the opinions of rabbis. I think I'd rather have the, the, the writings of the prophets. But, uh, and the Kabbalah. You want to get your uh, Bible knowledge from people like uh, Madonna with her little red string around her wrist? I don't think so. At least not me. No, thank you. Now, King Saul started off good and ended up bad. He ended up consorting with a witch. The apostle, well, Saul, who became the apostle Paul, started off bad and ended up pretty good. He started off uh, as a Pharisee and then ended up a Christian. Now, if you spend any time at all on the... Uh, on the internet, start doing Bible studies, you're going to meet those that will tell you that, oh, well, Paul's a bad, a false apostle. They're going to try to convince you that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the apostles that Paul was a fake, that he was a deceiver, a wolf, sent to uh, devour the flock. Yeah. They, they will try to convince you of that. And another thing. Anybody that tells you Paul's a false apostle is telling you that the book of Acts is not, it's, it's no good. The book of Acts is no good. Because Acts, the book of Acts, you know, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels, and then what's next? The book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. What do they do after Christ was resurrected and risen up into heaven? What do they do? The, they, they, those were the Acts of the Apostles. Well, the conversion of Paul and the miracles that he did and his travels, a lot of it is in the book of Acts. And if Paul's a false apostle, that means you need to rip the book of Acts out of your Bible and throw it in the garbage and burn it along with Galatians, the book of Ephesians, Philippians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, uh, the book of Romans. Uh, are you getting the idea here? I mean, really? I, that you will, you'll run into these people. I run into them. Well, I used to run into them a lot more, but uh I've been so busy doing my own Bible studies, I don't have, go, have time to really go to other uh, YouTube channels and leave comments. Besides, my comments are disappearing, so that was one of the reasons I quit leaving comments on a lot of places. But, um, I mean, really, you know? And I've had people on my channel, I guess you could say sort of kind of my channel, it's you know, it's just me telling you about Jesus, but that uh, ended up in the Paul's a false apostle crowd and they left the faith. They go back to the Hebrew roots, so-called. Hey, you want to go back to uh, the, uh, the, the religion of the Antichrist? You go, girl. Or you go, guy. You go for it. And then... Uh, you know, because if you're going to deny Paul, you're going to deny the guy that sent Paul, who was Jesus, and you may as well deny Jesus while you're at it, and the one that sent him, which was God the Father. Paul did all kinds of miracles. And Peter acknowledged Paul as a brother in the faith. So when you hear all this garbage about, well, Paul's a false apostle, tell him to go to hell. Really? Oh, wait. Yeah, they are. Let's read about that. Well, before we start with the book of Paul, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the book of Acts, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, <laughs> and you know what? They'll deny... Second Peter was even written by Peter. Oh, well, this is a fake, another fake book that those Paul people 
uh, stuck in the Bible to prove, try to prove that Paul was real, but he's really not. He's a fake. You know what? Let's read 2 Peter chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Aren't there a lot of Bible scoffers? I've talked to people and they're like, Ugh, the Bible. Yeah, they've been talking that last day stuff for thousands of years. That there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts. San Francisco was full of them. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Verse 5. For this they, are, they willingly are ignorant. For this they are uh, willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens of, were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now, what are they talking about there? Noah's flood, duh. There's people that uh, deny Second Peter. Oh, that's not talking about the flood. Ugh. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. See, the rainbow was God's uh, symbol of promise that he would never flood the whole entire earth again. This time, it's going to be fire. Want to hear a neat song? The Crazy World of Arthur Brown, Fire. Oh, yeah. Uh... I kind of like that song back in the day. But he's not the god of hell and fire. But, but the rest of the song's pretty good. So, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Now, somebody that I really respect did a uh, check on gen generations and genealogies. And they said, according to their calculations, the earth is pretty close to 6,000 years old. From the time of Adam to the time of Christ to, the, to, to, to now. It's been almost 2,000 years since Christ died. And from the time of Adam and Eve to uh, Christ was about 4,000 years. Now remember, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. God worked six days and on the seventh day he rested. And remember, when the Lord returns, there's going to be a what they call a millennial reign of Christ. Millennium just means thousand. It's a Latin word, it means thousand. That's where you get the word millimeter or, you know, millimeter, a thousand meters, or I mean, I mean, well, a thousandth of a meter, one thousandth of a meter. So, you know, everybody's heard of, uh, well, ask guys, you know, uh, a nine millimeter bullet. Yeah. You take that 100 times and you got 900 and do that another 11 times and you got 999 millimeters and it's almost a meter. A meter is roughly a yard, roughly, close. So millennium, 1,000 years. So you got 6,000 years and then the 7,000th seventh, seventh 
thousand year is the uh, Sabbath. So, you know, you look at this, does this sound like a fake book to you? It doesn't to me. I mean, I, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Well, promise. As some men count slackness. Uh, have you ever heard, oh, that guy at work, he's a, he's, he's a slacker, which means he's lazy. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do. But the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And people, let me tell you something. If you find a ministry that you like and you listen to them and they don't teach repentance, turning from sin, if they don't teach about sin and turning from sin, it's a false, they're, they're a bunch of fakes. They're, they're a bunch of devils. Trust me on this. And I hope I teach enough about uh, repentance and turning from sin. Well, I do, but yeah, I got over a thousand Bible studies. I can't preach the same, uh, teach the same thing on every study. I mean, come on now. I know some sometimes it sounds like I'm teaching the same thing, but what can I tell you? Verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You know what, uh, do you know what glass is? Glass is sand that is melted. And, uh, it turns into a crystal and crystal form. Believe it or not, that's what glass is. Glass is sand, silica. So, it, you know, <laughs> the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works therein that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening, hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we... According to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So, uh, I don't think Satan's going to be there. Or any of his children. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Here's the punchline. Pay attention. Verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. What? And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as. Our beloved brother, Paul, our beloved brother, Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, what's an epistle? It's just a letter, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Do you know that Paul writes some, some things that are hard to be understood? Which they, 
that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. What? Yeah. Peter is telling you here, those that don't listen to Paul, which are they that are unlearned, they're dumb and unstable, and they rest or wrestle. Not only Paul's writings, but also they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. You want to reject Paul? You're going to reject the other scriptures too, unto your own destruction. You reject Paul, you're rejecting Christ that sent Paul, and you may as well reject Christ who the Father, God the Father, sent. And if you don't have Christ, you don't have the Father either. I don't care what John Hagee says. Bingo. You know, the book of Acts and 2 Peter confirm Paul as an apostle. And if Paul was a fake Somewhere in the Bible, the apostles would have said, get out of here, Paul, you wolf. But they didn't. They didn't. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know those these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Yeah, like the Hebrew roots. Or the sacred name stuff. God, I, I, I just, I, I want to cry over these people that argue over how to pronounce a name. Uh, it's just sad. I don't think we know how to pronounce the name. You know, Hebrew is basically a dead language. I don't care what anybody says. They don't speak Hebrew over in the Middle East country over there. They speak Yiddish. There might be a few people that know Hebrew, but generally as a whole, it's a dead language. I mean, you know, all these people trying to impress you with uh, pronouncing all these sacred names. What did you learn that over the internet? Really? You know? And they'll be the first ones to tell you, Paul's a false apostle. And then they'll, by the time you're they're done, you won't even use the name Jesus anymore. And the New Testament was written in Greek. Yeah. There's 5,000 partial Greek manuscripts of the Bible. Zero Hebrew ones. What does that tell you? And who killed the apostles and Jesus and Stephen? Wasn't the Roman church. It wasn't Rome. Pilate tried to release Jesus. At least if you believe your Bible, which I do, it was not the Rome, the Romans that killed Jesus. They might have carried out the sentence, but they didn't want to. Pilate tried to release Jesus. So who killed Jesus and the apostles? Yeah. Uh, it's a word, it rhymes with, uh, you know, like the uh, evening news, news, yeah. Yeah, it rhymes with uh, news. Yeah, and starts with a J. They killed Jesus and the apostles. They wanted nothing to do with Jesus. Verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, here's the thing, people. The devil's kids infiltrated the temple. And... According to Josephus, a Jewish historian, 
he said that Herod's family were Edomites, and God didn't have many good things to say about Esau, Edom, the Idumeans. I mean, after all, he's he built the temple. Well, he didn't. He expanded on the temple. Uh, not because he wanted to worship God. He wanted to control. And it was a money-making thing. I mean, what did Jesus do to the money changers? He kicked them out, right? Over through their tables. It was a money-making scheme for them. So when Jesus comes along and says, just believe on me, you don't need the temple anymore. They're like, wait a minute, this guy's taking our business away. We got to get rid of this guy. And guess what? That's what they did. They got rid of him. Rome didn't, you know, Rome didn't care. Hey, you want to preach? Uh, but, you know, Jesus, the, the, what was it? The Pharisees asked uh, Jesus, oh, is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Rome? Huh? Trying to trick Jesus. What did Jesus do? He said, show me a penny. Show me the Roman coin. They showed it to him and he says, Who's, whose picture is on this coin? Whose image? And whose writing is on this coin? And they said, Caesar's. Yeah. So give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and the, give to God the things that are God's. You know, Rome didn't care. Hey, Jesus told them to pay the taxes. They, they didn't care. You know? All right. I, uh, that's what I just did was called apologetics. And it's not saying, oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, the word apologetics actually means to give an answer. That's what it means, to give an answer. Hey, Bob, um, you know, uh, what, uh, what's the Sabbath, you know? Oh, well, that was the seventh day that the Lord rested. Now, that's giving an answer, right? Or if somebody asks you, uh, why was Jesus different than everybody else that was ever born before him? Well, that would be apologetics. So, all right, let's go to Acts chapter 6. Uh, I hope, I hope none of you that are listening to this will ever, ever fall for that Hebrew root, sacred name, Paul-hating garbage because Paul died for his faith, according to legend. I don't know. I mean, you know, what are the Hebrew Roots people? When, have, when has any of them died for the faith? You know, Paul even said, if, if I teach, uh, you know, if I were to teach circumcision, as a way of salvation, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, they wouldn't be persecuting me. But I'm teaching Jesus and Christ crucified. I mean, come on, people. They hated Paul. And that's where, and all these Hebrew roots and all this other stuff comes, comes from the you-know-whos every single time, without a doubt. And oh, by the way, people, uh, next Sunday, next week, I'm supposed to be on Patriots, plural, PatriotsSoapbox.com, 10 p.m. to midnight, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you can write me at Proton Mail, uh, I'm sorry, Chaplain Bob at Proton mail.com just in case YouTube deletes me and deletes my Gmail account which I've heard they've done that before I've got an alternate so I because I don't know I don't know how long 
I'm going to be on the air. Oh, another reason they don't like Paul is because Paul went to Greece. And uh, all his, you know, uh, well, not all, but many of his letters or epistles, uh, you know, Thessalonians, Ephesians, uh, those were Greek cities in Greece. He was preaching to the Greeks who were coming to Christ. Acts 6, 1. And in those days when the numbers of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Uh, I just noticed this. The twelve. Paul hadn't been called as an apostle yet. Judas hung himself. So, what twelve? Ah, yes. The apostles drew lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, remember? I think it was Matthias. But they did this on their own. They didn't... Um, they didn't consult with the Lord. The Lord didn't tell them to do this. They did it on their own to replace Judas Iscariot. But there was 12. Then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Okay. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business all right so they're gonna you know but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word so the apostles are going to be praying and preaching the word but they're going to get seven people seven guys to um serve the widows you know i guess they're going to be serving food and what have you i don't know exactly but verse five and the saying pleased the whole multitude and they chose stephen a man full of faith and of the holy ghost and philip and prochorus and nichenor and timon and Farmanaeus and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now these were the real, the real priests, the Levites. A great company of the Levite priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the Synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. They were arguing with Stephen. Uh, the Libertines. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe uh, they believe that they had liberty to do anything they wanted. So they're arguing with Stephen. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. When they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. Uh, guess what council? Yeah. And set up false witnesses. Oh, just like the trial of Jesus, false witnesses. 
which said, This man ceaseth, ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. Oh, yeah. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. Well, guess what, people? 70 AD, guess what happened? Jesus of Nazareth sent the Roman armies, two legions, and they destroyed Jerusalem and burned the temple. Burned it. Guess what? The temple was destroyed on the same exact day by Rome, the same exact day that the Babylonians had years earlier destroyed it. What are the chances of that? Uh, well, I'm not a mathematician or a statistician, but I believe... Uh, that would be, you take 365 days times 365 days, multiply that out, and what do you get? That's one chance in 133,000, and give or take a few hundred. Uh, seems like you'd have a, uh, that's like winning the lotto. Well, the lottery. Well, I don't know. I don't, probably not, but you get my idea. What are the chances that on the same exact day the Romans and the Babylonians destroyed the temple? Uh, God is sending a wake-up call. Hello? God sent them a message in 70 A.D. And you know, that is something I just recently learned, like a year or so ago, maybe two years, I don't know, that it was the same exact day that it was destroyed. Acts 6, 14. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. For all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. His face shone, it shined like an angel. Acts chapter 7. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? Uh, I wonder if that's the same high priest that condemned Jesus to death. What do you think? And he, Stephen, and he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Now Stephen's giving them a history lesson here from the Bible. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans. Now remember, the Chaldeans were uh, affiliated, affiliated with the uh, Babylonians. When they went into captivity, uh, the Babylonian, when Judah went into the Babylonian captivity, Jerusalem. You know, you can read about that, Jeremiah. You can read about that with uh, the book of Daniel. So... He was in the land of the Chaldeans, and he left. All right. Verse 4. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charon, and from thence when his father was dead, he removed him into this land where ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession, and to his seed, or children, and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, 
said God, and after that they shall come forth and serve me in this place. Now, they're talking about Egypt, you know, and Moses, the Egyptian captivity, right? Verse 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs, you know, the 12 tribes, the 12 sons. Verse 9. And the patriarchs moved with envy. They moved with envy sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no substance. Yeah, they had no food. There was famine in the land, right? But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he went out, our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known to Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred threescore and fifteen souls. Uh, threescore. That's uh, 20, 20, 20. That's 60 and 15. So that's 75 people. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and, his, and our fathers, and were carried over unto Shechem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Imor, the father of Shechem. And when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. A uh, little side note here. Uh, there was the Hiskos who conquered Egypt at uh, the time that uh, Joseph was in Egypt. Uh, they were Semitic cousins. I think it's H-Y-S-K-O-S. -S. Uh, Hiskos. You read about the Hiskos. They conquered Egypt when Joseph was there. And they were. They were Semitic cousins. So when you read about uh, Joseph marrying Potiphar, uh, the priest, uh, it's very very possible. I think they were Hebrews too. Or at least of the same stock. Uh, but you don't read about that stuff. Well, eventually the native Egyptians overthrew the Hiskos. And then that was the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. So, you know, and then they turned uh, Israel into slaves. All right. Um, verse 17, but when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end that they might not live. Remember, they took the uh, boys and threw them in the Nile River. And either they were drowned or they were sn uh, snacks for the crocodiles, the Nile crocodiles. Um, and then people say, oh, well, that was horrible. God killed all the firstborn of Egypt in the Passover. He's so evil. Um, I'll tell you what, you could think that if you want, but uh, God gave them back what they gave to Israel. I mean, really? They were killing all the children, all the boys of Israel. So uh, God just uh, gave them a taste of their own medicine, I guess you could say. So they cast out their young children to the end they might not live, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair. Uh, I hate to tell you, but fair is kind of a, a description of his, uh, his looks. You ever heard of uh, Disney Snow White? The Wicked Witch looks at the mirror, the magic mirror, and she goes, 
Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well, we're not talking about playing poker games, okay? You know, playing fair or cheating. No. They're talking about their looks. And who was the fairest of them all? Snow White. What color snow? Oh, okay. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Uh, he probably knew all their satanic stuff. Egypt is not ever, to my knowledge, is not ever talked about nicely in Scripture. Not that I know of. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. You ever heard of the Egyptian Book of the Dead? I don't know if it came from Egypt, but uh, yeah. And when he was a full, and when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. So he killed an Egyptian. Moses was a murderer. Verse 25. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver him, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one another, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did this his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Wow. Then fled Moses at the saying and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. And when 40 years were expired, now remember, Moses is 40 years old, when uh, all this happens, he goes to Midian. Forty more years go by. M Moses is 80 years old by the time all this happens. And when 80, um, and when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Then Moses saw it. He wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him saying, I am, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groanings, and am come down to, to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that. He had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Listen to this carefully. Verse 38. I'm going to read this twice, if not three times. Now remember, God's talking about taking Israel out of Egypt by the hand of Moses. Keep that in mind. Verse 38. This is he that was in the church, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. 
what was given at Mount Sinai? Moses went up to the mountain and was given the Ten Commandments. Remember? This is he, Moses. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. God is talking about Israel here, but he calls it the church in the wilderness. Do you catch that, people? The church was with it, Moses in the wilderness with, with Moses, the church. The church is Israel, and Israel is the church. Get that through your skull. The Lord was talking about Moses taking Israel into the wilderness. Verse 38, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. People, if you've never read the book of Exodus, I mean, this is the book of Exodus right here. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Who's the host of heaven? The fallen angels, people. You know, all these false gods are the fallen angels, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, that's what they are. You know, if an angel of shining light appeared to a bunch of superstitious people and said, I'm God, they're going to believe it. Especially if that angel can fly away and do all kinds of stuff, you know? Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Listen carefully. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Who is Moloch? Moloch was the god that required them to burn their children alive in fire. They sacrificed their own children in fire. Human sacrifice. That was Moloch. God never told him to do that. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god, Rempham. You know what Rempham has reference to? The giants. Think Genesis chapter 6. The giants. Which is why God destroyed the earth in the flood. Well, guess what? After the flood, there were giants again. Goliath, anybody? Oh, yeah. You know, this is why it's so important to read the entire Bible. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Rempham, the star of the giants. Uh, what star do the you-know-whos carry? It's got six points. It's got a triangle facing up, and it's got a triangle facing down. Yeah. And the witches have a, and the Church of Satan has a little saying, as above, so below. Well, right now, Satan has a lease on the earth. And they want to make 
As above, so below. But it ain't going to work out that way. Because one day the, the, uh, the, the lease is going to run out. And then the landlord's going to return with his angels, and uh, it's not going to be a pretty sight for the uh, for the you-know-whos. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphem, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon." Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he hath a, had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. Verse 45. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles. That word Gentiles is the same word that they translate as nations. Okay? It's the same word. Uh, you know, sometimes it, they translate it as nations, sometimes it's Gentiles. You listen to the modern preachers and they'll say, Gentile means non-Jew. No, it doesn't mean non-Jew. It just means a nation. Sometimes it's talking about the heathen nations. Sometimes it could be talking about the nations of Israel. That's all it means, Nations. So you got to read the context to know what kind of nations are is it talking about? Is it talking about the 12 nations of Israel or is it talking about the satanic heathen nations round about them? Which also our fathers that came after brought in with uh, Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him an house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Oh yeah, God made all these things. You're going to build him a house? Verse 51, now Stephen's going to rebuke them. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? That's right. Uh, if you wanted to live a very short life, you could ask the Lord to make you a prophet. And you'd have a very short life. Very, very short. Uh, you, prophets generally didn't retire. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one. Now, who's the just one? Christ. Of whom ye have now, uh, of whom ye have been now, the betrayers and murderers. Stephen's not talking to Rome here. He's talking to Israel and the Jews in the temple. And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. Yeah, you received the law from the hands of the angels, but you haven't kept it. Verse 54. Instead of repenting and saying, oh boy, we've been doing evil and repenting, what do they do? Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Boy, what a sight that would be to see, huh? Verse 56, And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened 
and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. Uh, you know, I don't think they were, uh, I don't think they were giving him marijuana, but uh, yeah. The stoning of St Stephen gets stoned. No, he wasn't buying uh, Colombian gold or uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was, drumroll, whose name was Saul. Oh, yeah. Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Oh, uh, that's a euphemism. He got, he died. He wasn't taking a nap, waking up in six or seven or eight hours later. So, yeah. Stephen gets stoned. No, he wasn't smoking the good stuff. So, what can I tell you? The church was with Moses in the wilderness, people. Yeah. And it wasn't the Romans that killed the prophets and the apostles, and they didn't kill Stephen. No. They didn't want to hear about Jesus because uh, they were making money on the temple. Uh, has anything changed in 2,000 years almost? Well, turn on your TV and uh, take a look at TBN. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, send God, send God your money. Buy my book. It's only $19.95. And if you order now, you get a piece of a prayer shawl blessed by the rabbi that was dipped in the Jordan River. And we'll send that to you. My book's only $19.95. And uh, uh, yeah, send your donation to God. But here's our address. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't think so. So... Yeah, which is why um, I don't sell nothing, people. You know? Je Jesus said, freely ye have received, freely give. And I believe that. So, all righty. Well, I hope uh, you learned something. And like I say, when you hear people say that Paul's a false apostle, tell them to go to hell. Go to hell. Well, they are. Second Peter chapter 3. Yeah. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle the, uh, the other scriptures under their own destruction. Uh, that's the Bob paraphrase. I don't have that memorized. I probably should. You know, I probably should spend some more time memorizing scriptures. But, um, you know, I'm kind of a generalist. I don't try to specialize in any one area. Well, maybe a little bit towards end time prophecy um, because that's what's going to keep you alive, you know. Well, maybe not alive, but, uh, you know, not taking the mark of the beast, not denying Christ when it comes time to get your head chopped off, uh, that kind of stuff, you know. I find that very important. Um uh, you know, if you're not caught up into the air to be with Christ, it's the wrong Messiah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, what can I tell you? I'm just some guy with a microphone and a computer and, you know, I guess six years of Bible college didn't go completely to waste. Um, not totally. They tried to brainwash me, but... Uh, too late didn't work so lord had other plans so like i say uh patriots plural 
PatriotsSoapbox.com or uh, ChaplainBob at ProtonMail.com. Keep that in mind because you never know. Uh, I never know when my last day on the tube is going to be. I mean, you know, it's it's amazing. They uh, deleted four of my videos in one day. Four. Four videos. They didn't give me strikes. They just deleted them. I was like, what? And they've deleted a lot more. I don't even know how many videos they've deleted. Sometimes they just delete my videos and they didn't even notify me. I mean, one time I put a video out, like a few days later, uh, somebody said that they were watching my video and they paused it. Uh, and then they came back and it was gone. And they asked me, why did you delete that video? I was like, I didn't. And sure enough, I went and looked and it was gone. And I was like, wow. So, you know, it's, uh, and censorship, it's getting bad. It's getting bad. Uh, Zuckerberg, fake book, uh, he decided no uh, anybody that's against the official narrative on uh, the the Vaseline, Vaseline, you know the uh, the uh, jab that they're going to give people. I don't even want to say that word, but uh, he says they're just going to delete everything and everybody that talks uh, that has a uh, a different opinion from uh, the people that are going to make a fortune selling this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I already had two videos deleted on that subject, believe it or not. And uh, I got two strikes, and if I get one more strike, I'm gone off the tube. And I got a, like a 30-day ban on uh, Fakebook. I got about another three weeks left. I don't think I'm ever going to go back to Fakebook. It's what a waste of time. It's just what a waste. It's, it's not even worth it fooling over so um if i'm on patriot soapbox and youtube i'm going to be very busy you know and i'm not complaining but i spend hours hours every day answering comments questions making videos and uh that's going to be a two-hour radio show well kind of like a radio show and uh it's live so I, you know, I gotta have some, I gotta have some material prepared. So, uh, if um, they got a chat room, from what I understand, so if you find a news thing that you find worthy that you'd like to share, by all means, put it in the chat. The link, uh, you know, if you got questions. Uh, when I'm talking, you know, maybe say, well, uh, where does the verse that says uh, Jesus said he was light of the world? Oh, okay, that's John 8, 12. I can, you know, copy it or whatever, uh, post it on the chat, you know, if you got questions or whatever. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Um, you know, uh, they're, it's Christian friendly. Uh, not all the people that are on that side are Christians, but they're not, you know, it's basically people, um, you know, let's see what's going on in the world and don't like the direction we're heading. So, you know, uh, keep that in mind. So, all right, take care. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father. And his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.